I just got into Chicago from the least used Amtrak station in Tennessee and I have 10 hours to kill here until my Cardinal train back to Philly. And I realized there's a train of new Siemens coaches leaving here in like 20 minutes and I figured I would just impulse buy a ticket to go to the first stop on the line which is Summit, Illinois and it's like a 20 minute trip but then I get to check out the new coaches and that sounds really fun and yeah. This is apparently a trip before. He doesn't have duration or expertise And he's not like Paul or Jeff He can do this with ease And now it's apparently too late to afford So it's apparently a trip report Man, it's so shiny. This feels like a bigger coach than the Amphletes. Like, this is just a tall thing. They have stairs that come down. Where are you going? Summit. You're going to Summit? Yeah. Yeah, head down. Oh, okay. You don't get any summits. I'm just want, I just want to ride these new cars, yeah. So there are steps that come down to help people up. I don't know how it works for wheelchairs. There's Wi-Fi. Oh, it's so wide. Well, this is a good one. The overheads are made of glass, which is very fancy. They fit pretty well. Look at that. The outlets are in the middle here between the two seats. That's pretty clever. That's a good spot for them. On older Amtrak cars, the outlets are over here, so it's either awkward or impossible for the person sitting on this side to get their plug in. And then this armrest can come down, which is very nice. That's not on the Amfleet. So gotta say though, I'm a big fan of the Amfleet seats, and these are not quite as good in terms of just like pure softness. Like these are kind of hard. I'm trying to figure out if these headrests are actually comfortable now, like adjusting my positions. Like, it's just kind of restricting because there's not that much of it. It's probably better than nothing, but I can't tell if it's actually comfortable. The recline is controlled by a button. How far back do these go? I'm pushing it, nothing's happening. Okay, no, this seat doesn't recline. There's also a wall armrest that comes down, so you kind of rest your arm on that. I guess here's the tray tables. This is all, ooh, that is a big tray table. That is far bigger than the Amfleets. For comparison's sake, I can put my bag on this. <laughs> like, that's massive. There's also little uh, thingies down here. Maybe one day they'll put safety cards in there. We've got reading lights. Oh wait, that's bright. Wow. I will say, maybe not the best, but this seems to be loose already. <laughs> uh, well. uh -oh. One huge improvement over the Amfleets, these windows are massive. There are also luggage racks on each end of the car, which is nice. Okay, update. I figured out the recline. So, it's not a back thing. You push this and then you scoot forward and the seat kind of... I guess it's more comfortable. It's super subtle. Upon further review with my new recline knowledge, I think these head things are comfortable. I wonder where the seat check would go. There's a little uh, holder for that on each seat. The question everyone was asking finally got answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think these screens are supposed to show the next stop and have announcements and whatnot, but uh, not this one, I guess. It's kind of room for a bike over here. Luggage rack. This is open automatically. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Sliding door. Now we close it. Oh, and it automatically locks when you push the button. That's huge. This is really nice. So we got the toilet. We got no toilet paper in the thing, but toilet paper here, I guess. A wavy flush. Ah. Hand washing. Push. Oh, push the track goes in there. Okay. And then actually like a nice dryer. Now all this stuff is touch free. That's awesome. So, hello. There we go. I do wish on the Amfleet there's a sign at the end of the car that says when the bathroom's occupied. This doesn't seem to have that. So you have to walk down and find out. They have separate trash and recycling. Heck yeah. It is too bad they're in like kind of a different vestibule, whereas in the Amfleet it's kind of just in the car, but I'm nitpicking at this point. Oh, it doesn't open on Oh, so this, this door doesn't open automatically. This is a button. Okay. Gotcha. But it opens really quickly. Yeah, and this opens automatically. Gotcha. I know this line eventually goes 110 miles an hour. I'd be curious to know how these perform there, but no real complaints about the ride quality. Just a quick trip? Yeah, just wanted to check out the new cars. Again, not sure how wheelchairs are handled with this, but I, I would assume they're accessible in some way. Well, while I'm here, uh, the station's uh, pretty bad. Let's talk to our special correspondent to see if the new Amtrak Siemens cars are worth it. That was a strange way of asking that, Miles. But the Siemens cars are an improvement in pretty much every way to the Amfleets, and I really enjoy my time on them. From the big windows to the bathrooms to the size of the tray tables, everything is awesome on them. The one major exception to that is the seats. They are perfectly comfortable for the day trains that they're running on in the Midwest, but if you put them on the Northeast Corridor, you have night trains and significantly longer trips, I think they would get a little uncomfortable after a while. So hopefully when Amtrak gets these cars for the Northeast Corridor, they'll find a way to make them a little more comfortable. If you want to ride these cars, they're available to ride on the combined Lincoln Service Missouri 
River Runner trains, as well as Wolverine trains 350 and 355. Just note that if you do ride these trains, you're going to want to stay in coach. Right now, the business class cars are still Amfleets. But overall, the Siemens Venture cars are great. I'm going to give them eight wavy flushes out of 10.